Why does God allow the innocent to suffer? This question arises in our mind many a times when we see so much of suffering in the world and it is felt by everyone to one degree or another. Sometimes people suffer as the direct result of their own poor choice, sinful actions or willful irresponsibility. In those cases we see the truth of the Proverbs 13 to 15, the way of the treach treacherous is their ruin. But what about the victims of the treachery? What about the innocent who suffer? Why would God allow that? Is it human nature to try to find out a correlation between bad behavior and bad circumstances and conversely between good behavior and blessings? The desire to link sin to suffer is so strong that Jesus dealt with the issue at least twice. As he went along, he saw a man blind with birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. According to John, Verses 9, 1-3 The disciples made the mistakes of assuming that the innocent would never suffer and assigned personal guilt to the blind man or his parents. Jesus corrected, corrected their thinking, saying, This happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. The man's blindness was not the result of personal sin. Rather, God had a higher purpose for the suffering. Another time, Jesus commented on the deaths of some people killed on an accident. Those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. According to Luke 13 verses 4 to 5, in this case, Jesus again discounted the notion that tragedy and suffering are the result of personal sin. At the same time, Jesus emphasized the fact that we live in a world full of sin and its effects, therefore everyone must repent. This brings us to the consideration of whether such a thing as the innocent technically speaks even exists. According to the Bible, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Therefore, no one is innocent in the sense of being sinless. We were all born with a sinful nature inherited from Adam. And we have already seen everyone suffers regardless whether or not suffering can be linked to a specific personal sin. Most heartbreaking of all is the suffering of a child. Innocent children suffer because of the sin of others, neglect, abuse, drunken driving. In those cases, we can definitely say that the suffering is the result of personal sin. And we learn the lesson that our sin always affects others around us. Other times, innocent children suffer because of what some might call acts of God, natural disasters, accidents, childhood diseases like cancer and uncurable diseases. Even in those cases, we can see that the suffering is the result of sin, generally speaking, because 
we live in a sinful world. The good news is that God did not leave us here to suffer pointlessly. Yes, the innocent suffer, but God can redeem that suffering. Our loving and merciful God has a perfect plan to use that suffering to accomplish his threefold purpose. First, he uses pain and suffering to draw us to himself so that we will cling to him. Second, he proves to us that our faith is real through the suffering and pain that has inevitable in his life. How we respond to suffering, especially when we are innocent of wrongdoing, is determined by the genuineness of our faith. Those with faith in Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, will not be crushed by suffering but will come through the trial with their faith intact. The innocent suffer in this world but this world and all that is in it will pass away. The kingdom of God is eternal. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world, according to John 18 to 36, and those who follow him do not see the things of this life, good or bad, as the end of the story. Even the sufferings we endure are terrible as they can be, are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Could God prevent all suffering? Of course he could, but he assures us all things would work together for good to them that love God and who are called according to the purpose. Suffering, even the suffering of the innocent, is part of the all things that God is using to accomplish his good purposes untimely. His plan is perfect, his character is flawless, and those who trust him will, be, will not be disappointed. Thank you. Thank you for watching.